welcome back to another daily walk today i want to take a little bit of time just talking about a maybe a warning to the next generation or uh, be careful of your church doctrine something along the general lines i don't know what my title is i'll come up with some pithy title by the time i release this guy but uh, what this comes from is i'm reading a book right now with a friend and um the it's a book that we looked at and go eh, i don't know where this guy's coming from and i wanted to read it Give it the benefit of the doubt before coming up with a final determination. You know, examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good and abstain from every form of evil. That's kind of the approach I've been taking reading this book. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I'll do a full comprehensive discussion on it later. But one of the key factors that seems to be present throughout the book is the author has a fundamental misunderstanding of doctrine because of the types of churches he was grown up in. And it's, uh, so he's a younger author, certainly younger than me. I'm thinking, I mean, the book was just released about two years ago, and I want to say the guy is still very early 20s. Um, and so looking at all the context uh, around it, what I can kind of see is he was raised in a church growth doctrined church. Now, as a missionary's kid somewhere else, uh, and that could play some other roles in what we're talking about later, but realize that this model of the church growth church has been picked up and implanted on a lot of different places. And people are growing up in this. And so we see elements of, you know, his discussion about what youth group is like. And when we see that, uh, those discussions of what youth group was is like for how he's growing up, we see this modern youth group. The thing I've been warning about for a long time. In fact, there is an old book. It is out of print. I doubt you can find a copy, but if you can, it is called Spiritual Junk Food. Absolutely read that book. It is by, uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a decade since I've read it personally, but um, it was from, it was analyzing the fact that youth groups moved away from following God and followed this modern model of just entertaining the kids. And that's really what, if go to almost any youth group in a church in America, and all you find is a lot of entertainment with, you know, a, a couple of scattered Bible verses thrown in here to, to, to add the Jesus touch. And that's one of the, the factors that I'm seeing in this book, is this person was raised in this type of modern church that, I warn about. And the reason I warn about the churches is because they are not in alignment with the doctrines in the scriptures. All right. They're not. They just do not align right. And what I see is this person has so many views of Christianity, views on marriage, which I've talked on this channel before. Paul calls us to a, that singleness is a higher calling. You can read about it in, in the various places he talks about it. And I've actually had entire messages on that. Um, so you can you can look for those. Um, what is the degree of singleness? So he, the guy was raised in a church that's one of these modern churches. They're, they're pushing everybody to get married. They're pushing the regular fun. They're pushing bad doctrine. They're pushing easy believism. They're pushing all these things that we see in a modern church in America today. And what it produces is this person. And this is an interesting book because it is a, such a young author who was born and raised in one of these types of new churches. And these types of churches are fairly new. We are just starting to see the early fruits of these generations. And Jesus says, you shall know the tree by its fruit. Bad tree cannot produce good fruit and a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. And what we're seeing in this book as we're reading it is this is the lifestyle, the result of a person who was born and raised in a theologically devoid church that had little moments of Jesus sprinkled in here and there that cared not for doctrine, not for the gospel, not for repentance, not for justification, not for anything resembling theology. All It's, it's like a Barnapole. I've been talking about some Barnapole issues on some of the live uh, live streams lately. You know, Barna defines a Christian as somebody who who says Christianity is important to them. Um, oh, what do they do? Um, uh, let's see. So a, a person that they they say Christianity is important to them, or or no, no, they say they're a Christian. 
they believe faith is important, and they've attended a church in the last month. That's what Barna defines as a Christian. Is that a Christian? Not biblically. And I did a whole separate video about why that's incorrect. Um, so I'm not going to expound on it here. But the fact is, when you get these churches and you're getting kids being raised in these churches, and we're seeing this young generation of people that are leaving the church and walking away from it altogether, they're walking away because there's no truth there. There's no confrontation of sin. There's no knowledge that we are sinners. There is no repentance. There is no anything that resembles biblical Christianity. It is, it's like a bunch of people that talk and are all excited about Jesus, but are too afraid to read the big book about it. You don't want to challenge yourself with theology. You don't want to grow in life. That is the type of thing we're talking about. So I'm reading a book by one of these authors right now, and it's fascinating because I fully appreciate his position. I'm thinking I'm going to disagree with some of his conclusions, but I feel so bad that he's never actually heard the gospel. Even right now, he is in a comfortable church that will not confront sin. It is at the point of sin is where we have to wage our attack. Do you admit that you are a sinner? Are you powerless over that sin? Have you believed in Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, born of a virgin, came to earth, lived a sinless life, and died on the cross? And have you placed your trust in that? Do you agree with God that your sinful actions are actually sinful actions? actions. That's that hinge pin. That's the gospel. And I have not seen a fraction of it yet. What I've seen is churchianity. I've seen go to church every Sunday. I've seen go to youth groups. I've seen get married in his book. I've seen all of these peripheral things that we talk about, but I have not seen the gospel. And even in his part where he talks about him being saved, the gospel is absent. We've got to start with the gospel. And when we have these modern churches that don't preach the gospel and are pushing more of a social club, less of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the, the challenge and the exhortation to live as the scriptures command us to live, we raise up a generation of people who believe they are saved, but echoing the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. In fact, that's, that's I think, verse 23. Before that, verse 21, people come in and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons and done many works in your names? And I will say unto them, I've never known you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That is a scary thing. But we are raising up a generation of people in these social clubs masquerading as churches because we do not have a fundamental understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is the hinge pin of our salvation. So thanks for coming along on this daily walk. Have a look at the links in the description down below and we will see you next week.